Good morning, good morning, brethren. Good morning. So, child of God, begin to thank the Lord this morning. Thank him and, and, and welcome his spirit. We know his spirit lives in us, but there's also a manifest presence of the Holy Spirit when the church gathers, where two or three are gathered together in my name. There is a manifest, manifest presence of the Holy Spirit where the spirit begins to move in a different way. So this morning, Father, as we have gathered, we thank you for your love. Thank you for your love that is moving amongst us. Thank you for the love of God that no sin can ever delete. Thank you for the love of God that no sin can ever destroy. Thank you for the love of God. Thank you for your love, Lord, that nothing could ever silence the love of God. The love of God is consistent. The love of God is dependable. The love of God is reliable. That's why the Bible told us in Romans 8, in Romans 8, it says, you know, from verse 38, for I am convinced, I am convinced beyond any shadow of doubt. I am persuaded and continue to be convinced beyond any doubt that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present and threatening, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other thing, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the unlimited love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The love of God is with us this morning. Love woke us up this morning. Love protected us overnight. Love has kept our destinies. Love is watching over us. Love is speaking over us. The love of God has kept us. The love is upholding us. The love has not allowed us to be put to shame. The love of God is here. The love of God is with us. So we are saying, Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way this morning. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for preserving us. Thank you for upholding us. The love of God is with us. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Assigned assassins, demonic agendas, and satanic altars, witches and wizards, warlocks. Nothing can ever separate us from the love of God. Nothing can stop God from loving us. So this morning we say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love. Holy Spirit, come. Revive us again, Holy Spirit. Come and have your way, Holy Spirit. Flow through us. Flow like a river, Spirit of truth. Flow like a river in us. Holy Ghost of the living God. Yes, move in us. We open up our hearts. We open up our spirit. We open up our soul. We open up, our spirit. We open up, our soul. We open up everything in us to receive your glory, to receive your will. You said, Lord, you love us thank you for the love the love that nailed Jesus to the cross the love that has brought our salvation the love that caused you to die for us we worship you heavenly father we honor you this morning we honor your kingdom father let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven what is not found in your throne room may not be found in our lives what is not found in the courts of heaven It will not be found here in our gathering. In the name of Jesus, have your way, Lord. Come and have your way, O God. Come and have your way, Lord. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done right here, Lord, right here in our in our lives, Lord. Let your will be done. We surrender to you. We surrender to the almighty, all-powerful God. We surrender to the one who knows it all. We surrender to the omnipotent, omniscient one. We surrender to you, the wise God. We surrender to the leadership of your spirit. Thank you for your love, Lord. Thank you for your love. Thank you for loving us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Be exalted, O God. Be exalted. Be exalted. Be exalted. Hallelujah. Have your way, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Brethren, like I've been saying, this is a great month for us. It's a great month. We see the 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 kind of effort by the enemy to reclaim ground but we know that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus we are overcomers and i know this is this month is going to be one of the best months for you and i because of the level of the spiritual warfare it tells you that god has done something awesome in the name of jesus and so i want you to pray this morning 
according to John 1. And I want you to declare once again that Jesus, in Jesus, is life. You know, John 1, 4 says, in him was life and the life was the light of men. I want you to declare that I am united with Jesus. I am in union with Christ Jesus. I have surrendered my life to him. And so I'm united with him. And in Jesus is life, is the way. And that life is the light of men. There is light in me, around me, over me, everywhere. Because I am in Jesus. I am in Christ. I am not just a human being trying to make it on my own. But I am in Christ. Begin to declare it this morning. Anything that tries to visit my life, that tries to visit my home, will come under the power of the light. Lord Jesus is my light. He lives in me. He dwells in me. Me and him are united. In him is life. And as I'm connected to him, I have life. I have Zoe. The endless life is flowing in me. And Jesus is the light. And the light shines on in the darkness. And the darkness has never overpowered the light. The darkness has never comprehended it, absorbed it, or appropriated it, or refused to respond to the light. So begin to declare. The light of God is shining in me. It shines around me. Wherever there is darkness, I release the light. I release the light. Let the light shine. Shine, 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 shine. In our neighborhood, in our homes, in our bloodlines. Let the light shine. Kuri bazu terere bosiya. Kuri baba bazi tarara bosiya. Ragada da boso tonobo. Let the light shine. Shine, Jesus, shine. Let the light of Jesus shine in your workplace, in that office, in that corridor. Ah, let the light shine in our children's nurseries, their schools, their families. Let the light shine. In the name of Jesus. Lord, shine your light, shine your light, shine your light, Lord, shine your light. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. And then I'll, I'll come back to that John 1, just maybe leave a reference for it. I want us to go to Romans 6. The Bible says in Romans 6, verse 6, in fact, when we start from verse 5, Romans 6 from verse 5, I'm reading it in the Amplified. It says, for if we have become one with Jesus, permanently united in the likeness of his death, we will also certainly be one with him and share fully in the likeness of his resurrection. Child of God, we know Jesus has died and, and resurrected. Nobody can talk us out of this truth. And the Bible says we were united with him in death. You see how intelligent God is. Even before we were born, we have already, the day we gave our life to Christ, because God is not limited by chronological time. The day I gave my life to Christ, it's as if my spirit and my soul and my body were translated to the day of the crucifixion on Calvary. And at that point, I died with Jesus. And when he rose again, I rose up with him. And that is a reality, is a spiritual reality. And if we became one with him in death, it means then everything that is not of God died that day. Everything that the enemy tries to plant and activate in us, it died that day. And when he rose again, you and I, we have also rose again with resurrection power. The power that brought Jesus from the grave is also upon us. It resurrects our mortal bodies. It resurrects every cell in the body that was sick. It resurrects every bone that was sick. So I want you to declare it this morning and say, I was united with Jesus in his death. Everything in me that is not of God died that day. When Jesus died on Mount Calvary, everything ungodly in me died. Every evil inheritance died. Whatever I'd received from my bloodlines that is contrary from the truth of God, it died. 
And today I have newness of life. When Jesus resurrected, I resurrected. The Holy Ghost who brought him out of the grave has brought me out. Out of sin. Out of premature death. Out of permanent death. He has brought me out of every kind of satanic opposition and frustration. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. And then in Romans 6, 6, the Bible says, we know that our old self, our human nature, without the Holy Spirit, our carnal side, the carnal side was nailed to the cross with him in order that our body of sin might be done away with so that we would no longer be slaves to sin. The slave to sin has no control. They wanted to stop smoking 10 years ago, but up to now they are smoking and they've increased the number of cigarettes. The slave to sin cannot stop sleeping around. They wanted to live a holy life 20 years ago. Up to now, they're still sleeping around. But you and I, the Bible says, we are no longer slaves to sin. For the person who has died with Christ has been freed from the power of sin. So now we are not to be dragged around by sin. Bible says, for sin shall have no dominion over us. For we are not under the law, but we are under grace. I want you to declare it and say, this body has died to sin. I am free from the power of sin. Yes, in the name of Jesus, I live unto God for righteousness. My old self died. The carnal nature died. The evil desires have died. Whatever side of me used to love sin, it has died. Sin has no control over me. I have the grace to resist sin. I have the grace to stand my ground, to resist the devil and he will flee from me because I submit myself to the grace of God. By the grace of God, I'm able to live a righteous life. By the grace of God, I am able to live a righteous life. I consider myself to be dead to sin and alive to God in Christ. I am alive to God in Christ and dead to sin. When sin tries to tempt me, I cannot be tempted by sin. I am dead to sin. When temptation comes, I can overcome because I have died to sin. Sin cannot dominate me in the name of Jesus. When I am tempted, I will not fall. I will not fail because I've died to sin. Sin cannot control me. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. You are worthy to be praised. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Oh, Rabasia, Rabasia, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want us then to go back to John 1. Remember, we said it's the light that shines in darkness and darkness could not comprehend. I want us to pray that, Lord, have I at any point ignorantly agreed with darkness? You know, whether in the dream or through my words, have I made any negative pronouncement? Is there anything I've said that is agreement with the darkness? Lord, right now I renounce it and I declare again that the light of God is in me. The light shines, no darkness can comprehend it. There should be no iota of darkness in my life, in my spouse, in my children, in my children's children. There should be no darkness with my prayer partners. There should be no darkness with our siblings, with our parents, our grandparents, whoever is around us. We rebuke darkness. We say darkness is not permitted amongst us. Darkness, you are rebuked in the name of Jesus. Jesus, we renounce all agreements with darkness, every form of darkness that has tried to creep into our lives. Father God, we stand in the name of Jesus and we say we are in the light and the light is shining. No darkness is permitted around us in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I reject darkness. I rebuke darkness. I release the light. All around me, I release the light. The light of Jesus. Let it swallow up any form of darkness. Let the light of Jesus chase away any form of darkness. Whatever darkness looks like right now in our lives, we are releasing the light of Jesus. We are releasing the light of Jesus. The light shines. When the light shines, there's no premature death. When the light shines, there's no sickness and disease. When the light shines, we do not make mistakes. We do not walk in error. The Bible says that the ones who walk in darkness stumble, but thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I cannot stumble because the light is shining 
the entrance of your word. It brings light. It brings understanding to the simple. It makes the simple wise because your light is here. I have the wisdom I need to excel. I have the wisdom I need to be more than a conqueror. I have the wisdom I need to fight a good fight of faith and to prevail. I have the wisdom that I need to be victorious when there's a spiritual attack because your light is here. I think in the light. I speak in the light. I feel in the light. I dance in the light. I talk in the light. Everything is in the light and the enemy has no legal ground over us. We stay in the light. We stay in the light. We stay in the light. Shaka baregadosi. Mazuka le boku rabababa. Maku re bababasi. Rada da 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 bosi tarabosi. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Thank you for the light, oh God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Brethren, our walk in the light, it will be consistent. It shall be consistent. It is consistent. We are not going to waver. You, you know, in the Bible, we read in the days of King David that there was a wise man, a wise man called Ahitophel. Ahitophel was so wise that when he spoke, they said it was like receiving counsel from God himself or from the angel of God. He was so wise. But then one day, David hurt Ahitophel and Ahitophel became bitter. He did not do anything about it. He kept quiet, but in his heart, he was looking for payback because Ahitophel was related to Bathsheba and he saw all that drama with Bathsheba and Uriah and he held a grudge. His heart became um, darkened because of that grudge. And of course, it was legitimate insult for David to do that with your own person. And, you know, you've worked with him. He's your friend and he dares to sleep with your granddaughter and then kills her husband. You know, so Ahitophel was angry. But the Bible says, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him, isn't it? Go and tell him, settle the matter. If you'll not listen, go and get two or three other people. Come and settle the matter. If they won't listen, then you know they're an unbeliever. You treat them like an unbeliever. But you see, Ahitophel kept quiet and that bitterness destroyed the wisdom of Ahitophel. It, sorry, it destroyed his position in the spirit realm and it destroyed his position in the kingdom. In 2 Samuel 17, Ahitophel comes with wisdom for Absalom. He's now supporting Absalom in rebellion. And of course, God would not support that. So when Ahitophel gave counsel, God made Absalom to ignore his counsel. And you know, it ended with Ahitophel killing himself. Ahitophel went to kill himself. Because he wasn't used to this sort of a thing. But my prayer point here is this. You've been an Ahitophel. You've had wisdom all the while up to now. Can you afford to then become somebody who is led by other things other than the spirit of God? Ahitophel had been led by the spirit of God. That wisdom came from God. Because the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit, part of his sevenfold manifestation is that he's the spirit of wisdom and he's the spirit of understanding and he's also the spirit of counsel. Ahitophel was moving with the spirit of God until bitterness tormented and darkened his heart until he made an error. I want you to pray for yourself and say, Father, by the blood of Jesus, anything that would remove me from the light and remove me from the wisdom of God and cause me to walk in error, I plead the blood of Jesus and I repent of it. I surrender render to you, oh God, whatever will cause me to make a mistake, to walk in error. I am pleading the blood of Jesus. Father God, search my heart. Any bitterness, any resentment, any hatred, any anger, any pride, any self-sufficiency, anything that makes me think that I can do it on my own without your mercy. Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. I will not be destroyed. I will not be destroyed. Lord, Lord, I receive wisdom. In the name of Jesus, when Ahitophel chose to follow Absalom, he followed the wrong person. 
He should have been following David. His, his destiny was connected to David. I want you to pray and say, Lord, in this season, I receive wisdom to know who are my destiny helpers. I receive wisdom to know who to follow. I receive wisdom to know what to do, where to go, when to go, when to sit down, when to talk, when to keep quiet. I receive that grace. Absalom enticed Ahitophel. Ahitophel made a mistake. He went with the wrong side. He chose the wrong side. The Lord was not on the side of Absalom. The Lord was on the side of David. Lord, help me to be on the Lord's side. In this season of spiritual warfare, may I know what to do. When Ahitophel combined with Absalom, it led to his death. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I will not walk with the wrong crowd. I will not go to the wrong people and receive wisdom. To know who is my destiny helper. I receive wisdom. We receive wisdom in these days, Lord, where there is warfare, where there is war in the heavenlies and on the earth. We receive wisdom, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, child of God, I want you to pray for yourself and pray for your family. Peradventure. You've already befriended Absalom. Peradventure, your child has already pre befriended Absalom. We want to pray. Lord, separate us from ungodly soul ties. Separate us from ungodly agreements. Separate us from unfriendly friends. Separate us, oh God. Any agreement we've come into with the wrong people, we are pleading the blood and using the sword of the spirit to cut off the soul tie. We separate ourselves from ungodly altars. We separate ourselves. I separate myself in the mighty name of Jesus. Every strange altar, every strange place, every strange church, I separate myself in the mighty name of Jesus. I will not befriend Absalom. I will not befriend those who are in rebellion to God. I will not walk with the evil ones. Lord, I receive grace. I speak over my family, my spouse, my children, my children's children, my brothers, my sisters, their children. Ah, my parents, oh God. I speak over my, my prayer partners. Lord, separate us, oh God. Separate us from ungodly unions separate us oh god in the mighty name of jesus thank you father in jesus name we pray amen brethren the devil is a liar he works and he has long-term plans sometimes he's very patient you know i want to give you an example about 18 years ago no 15 years ago maybe no 18 18 years ago there was a false prophet who started a church here in Manchester. And when he started that church, what had happened was a number of us who had been in a particular ministry had been looking for where to go and worship because um, there was something going on in the ministry where we were. So a lot of people were looking for where to worship. And, you know, when people are offended, they make decisions according to emotions. And so the Zimbabwean said, we're going to find a church where there's a Zimbabwean pastor. The South African said, we find a church where there's a South African pastor. The Nigerian said, we find a church where there's a Nigerian pastor. The Ghanaian said, we go to a Ghanaian church. Are you with me? So everybody was dividing. The white British said, we're going to a white British church. So everyone's looking. And then some people said they found a church. And it was here in Manchester. And the church wasn't far from my house. You know, it was about 10 minutes from my house. They kept inviting me. But when I would pray, the spirit of God would say, don't, don't tread there. And I already knew where to worship. So I said, ah, should I visit them? Holy Spirit said, no, not even to visit, not even to read anything they send. I remember at that time, they even sent me a website and they said, read our pastor is so anointed. He has revelation. He's been to heaven. He has had conversations with Archangel Michael. He has seen Gabriel. I did not read anything. I would not touch it. They were all there. Brethren, I'm telling you, every single person I knew who worshipped in that church today, they are no longer Pentecostals. They have backslidden. That was the last so-called Pentecostal church they attended. Many of them have gone back to Orthodox church. They don't pray anymore. They don't pray. These were tongue-speaking people. 
And that was the end of them. And you know what? That false prophet gained speed because of them. They were bringing so much money in that church. Oh, some of them left their jobs. So they left their jobs. One person came to me and said, how long will you be a nurse ha, in this country? You'll never make any money. Our pastor is so wise. He's told all of us to be business people. I've resigned my job in ICU. I will no longer be a nurse because I'm called for great things. I don't buy my shoes from next or all these cheap shops. I buy from faith and other designer labels. We wear proper clothes. Have you seen our pastor's wife? This was the ideology, you know. All of them have fallen by now. And that false prophet gathered speed at their hands. And the Lord gave me a revelation about him. I saw his head. I saw myself in his camp in, the, in, in a vision. And I saw on his head written 666, the mark of the beast. And in the spirit, I had a conversation with him and he said, don't bother coming into my ground. The people who are here want to be here. They have agreed with my spirit of antichrist. Who are you to come here? They have agreed. And I pitied the people in that church because they didn't know what they agreed with. And today that man is popular. And today a lot of apostles, so-called apostles endorse him. And I'm telling you that the devil is a liar. I want you to pray again. Have you befriended any Absalom? Have you, have you gone to pray with them? Have you listened to them? And they look good on the outside. And what is fueling them is not the spirit of God. Ask God to open your eyes and remove the emotions. Remove the emotions. Remove the emotions. Remove the emotions. Lord, in the name of Jesus, deliver your people from every confusion. Deliver them. It's not all that glitters that is gold. Open their eyes, oh God. Open their eyes. Every agreement with evil altars. It can call itself God's work, but it's not necessarily the God you know. In the name of Jesus, Father, let your light shine. Brethren, sincerely, I've told you before, when I was young, we thought we knew the devil's people, that they don't use the name of Jesus. But nowadays they do, because in the occultic realm, there is another Jesus. Ask anybody who's ever been initiated. There is another entity in the spirit realm that is a fake Jesus. So when you hear them saying, in Jesus' name, just don't know which Jesus they are talking about. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord, uh, that every veil that covers people's eyes uh, be removed with fire. Let their ears be open to hear the sound of the Holy Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. May you know the truth and may the truth that you know set you free. Let's go to Isaiah 11. Let's go to Isaiah 11. I want you to begin to pray and say, Lord, I will only serve the true Messiah. Who is the shoot that came out of the branch of Jesse, of David's lineage? That's the only Jesus I know, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who died, who was nailed to the cross, who died, who rose again on the third day. I renounce any other fake Jesus. I only serve the true son of God who lived in Nazareth. That is the Jesus I know. And I want you to speak according to Isaiah 11 too, and say the spirit of the Lord, I receive you. Yes, rest upon me. Spirit of the Lord, rest upon me. Spirit of wisdom, rest upon me. Spirit of understanding, rest upon me. Spirit of counsel, rest upon me. Spirit of might, rest upon me. Spirit of knowledge, rest upon me. Spirit of the fear of the Lord, rest upon me. Rest upon me, Holy Ghost, with your sevenfold anointing. Rest on me, Lord, rest on me. The Bible says this, when the spirit rests on you, listen to what happens in verse three. When the spirit is on you, it says in Isaiah 11 verse three, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord and he will not judge by what his eyes see, nor make decisions by what his ears hear, but with righteousness and justice, you will judge. Are you listening? This is how Jesus operates and this is how you as a child of God should operate. You should delight in the fear of the Lord and you will not judge by what physical eyes are seeing. 
Or you will not judge by what your ears say. Oh, this man is so powerful. Oh, this woman is so powerful. And then you just follow. I pray in Jesus name. May you judge by the spirit. May you hear by the spirit. May you stop hearing in the flesh. May you hear in the spirit. May you see in the spirit. When you go about your daily activities. See and hear in the spirit. Begin to pray for yourself. Lord may I delight in your fear. May I judge by the spirit of God. And hear by the spirit of God. Ragadosu kalebradosia. Rogodosu kalebradosia. Marokosu. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, Father God, we thank you. Lord, we celebrate you. Lord, we honor you. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, Lord, help us. Help, Lord, remove every spiritual blindness. Makura baba bazika legadazia makura baba baba bazika telebrodosia makare gadosia child of god receive eyes that see and ears that hear so that you can discern accurately so that you can discern with wisdom you are not going to use your spirit uh, or you know sorry your emotions uh, you will discern by the spirit of god uh, you will not use uh, what human beings are saying ah uh, rabasika lebrodosia you will use what the spirit is saying may you hear the still small voice uh, when a light was in that cave. He says the Lord was not in the wind. The Lord was not in the loudness, but the Lord came as a still small voice. May you hear the still small voice and you will not ignore it. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Shana masuka le basia, makura baba baba baba, lekete le basia, makura baba baba baba, lekete le boria gadosi andara bokura basia, makura baba baba baba, inda linda li gadosi valuga dasia, makura baba 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 si kale basia. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, Amen. As we round up this morning, I want you, child of God, to remember one thing. You know, for many of us, we may be first generation intercessors, first generation prophets, first generation pastors, first generation apostles. Maybe before you started praying, nobody in your bloodline had prayed the prayers you've prayed. Maybe before you started interceding, nobody really in your bloodline had done it. Maybe they said they are going to church, but what they meant was one ritual of attending one ritual place where there's a priest at the front and they, they are not really having a relationship with God. Their spirit is not regenerated. They are not born again. So when you've come now to start a new dimension in your bloodline, child of God, it would be honestly naive to sit and think that the devil will just fold his hand and say, oh, oh, lovely. Oh, she's on fire for Jesus. Oh, he's on fire for, oh, just, just leave him. Ah, oh, bless him. Let's go and find new people to attack. This one now is speaking in tongues. No, Satan's not going to do that. Because you've taken the ground they had for 1,000 years, for 2,000 years they had this ground and now you've taken that ground and now you think they're just going to leave you to just be speaking in tongues. No, they're not. They're going to be looking for another way and they will use yourself sometimes to self-sabotage yourself. God forbid that for us. I want to show us the story of Jeroboam. In 1 Kings 11, King Solomon had messed up, had disappointed God. And then the Lord located Jeroboam. Jeroboam had been a servant. Jeroboam had never been a king. Nobody in Jeroboam's family had ever been a king. But prophet Ahijah came and gave Jeroboam the word of the Lord. And he said to Jeroboam, take 10 pieces for yourself. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, behold, I am going to tear the kingdom from the hand of Solomon and give you 10 tribes. But he and his descendants shall have one tribe. Benjamin and Judah will form one tribe for the sake of my servant David and for the sake of Jerusalem, the city which I've chosen out of all the tribes of Israel. Jeroboam have 10. And Rehoboam is only going to have one, which is a combination of Benjamin and Judah. In, in logical terms, who is more blessed? Jeroboam or Rehoboam? 
Jeroboam, he's been given 10. He was to rule over the northern division of Israel. And God himself selected Jeroboam. And he said to him, in verse 35 of 1 Kings 12, I will take the kingdom out of Solomon's son's hand, who was Rehoboam, and give it to you, 10 tribes. And then he says in verse 37, I will take you, Jeroboam, and you shall reign over whatever your soul desires. Blank check. You shall be king over Israel, the 10 northern tribes. Jeroboam was exalted and given a big assignment like you and I have big assignments. But Jeroboam, the altar of his father's house, would not let Jeroboam continue in the ways of the Lord. You will read later on, Jeroboam became an idol worshiper. And he began to build a calf for people to worship. Why? Because his bloodline was questioning his new walk with God, was questioning his prophetic destiny, was questioning him and wanting to take him back to the olden days of high places and worshiping other entities. Child of God, that you have arrived doesn't mean you have arrived. That it looks like you are praying, praying doesn't mean you are immune to the attacks of the altars from where you come from. I want you to plead the blood of Jesus and say, Father God, in this season, Lord, give me the wisdom to stand my ground in the grace you have given me and in the freedom you have given me. Every attempt by the enemy to take me back to the errors of my bloodlines whether from my father's side or my mother's side or any other bloodline I'm connected to Lord I am pleading the blood of Jesus and I receive the grace to stand the Bible says stand after having done all continue to stand it says finally my brethren be strong in the Lord in Ephesians six ten. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And he says, you know, we, we are going to stand. And after having done all, keep standing. You put the armor of God. You stand against the principalities and the powers and the rulers of darkness and spiritual weakness in high places. You stand against what they are doing and keep standing. Lord, begin to speak. I receive the grace to keep standing. Nothing will reconnect me back to evil altars. Nothing will reconnect me back to the lifestyles that are not consistent with righteousness. Nothing will connect me back uh, to where I used to be. Uh, I received the grace to stand in the Lord uh, and in the power of his might. Uh, Jeroboam had been given a beautiful destiny, but he lost it. He self-sabotaged because inside of him, something allowed him to be reconnected back to the days of slavery. And he began to worship other things. Uh, Lord, in the name of Jesus, uh, I pray, Lord, uh, that anything in me that will self-sabotage my journey with you, Lord, remove it. Jeroboam had self-doubt. Rehoboam had only one tribe made of Benjamin and Judah. Jeroboam had been given 10. But in that 10, he wasn't at ease. He was afraid of Rehoboam. He was afraid of people going to worship in Jerusalem. He was afraid of them going to the temple. So he started rival worship that God had not asked them to do because he had this panic. Don't let them go to Jerusalem. They might go and follow Rehoboam. Yet God had given him his word. Father God, any doubt, any doubt that would come into our hearts that would lead us back to captivity we are pleading the blood and uprooting it from our hearts any self-doubt any fear anything lord that would send us backwards Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus. Help us, O oh God. The prophecies you have given us, may we hold on to the prophetic word. May we walk in the prophetic word. May we be fulfilled in your prophetic truth. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, have your way. We pray, O oh God, for ourselves, for our spouses, our children, our children's children, brothers, sisters, prayer partners, that Lord, may we remain in the truth you ordained for us. In the mighty name of Jesus, anything that would take us back to the enemy, Lord, we are pleading the blood. And we are shutting that door in the name of Jesus. You will give us that grace to continue to discern accurately to the glory of the Lord. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Yesterday, our sister Pauline was asking about um, the spirit of discernment and discerning. Um, now, if you look at Hebrews, you will find that the Bible talks about this. And um, it gives us a clear idea of how. We increase in discernment. Um, so there are two things. There's discernment and then there is the gift of the discerning of spirits. So when you're talking about discernment, that can only come through the study of the word of God. Hebrews 5 from verse 12 to 13, the Bible says, For though by this time you ought to be teachers, because of the time you have 
spent learning the truth. You actually need someone to teach you again about the elementary principles of God's word. And you have come to be those continually needing milk and not solid food. For everyone who lives on milk is doctrinally inexperienced and unskilled in the word of righteousness since he's a spiritual infant. But solid food is for the spiritually mature whose senses are trained by practice to distinguish between what is morally good and what is evil. In the King James, he says, who by reason of use, what are they using? They are using the word of God. So if you read the word of God, you apply the word of God, you obey the word of God, you listen to the word of God, you are corrected by the word of God, you submit to the word of God. And you do that over and over and over. Over time, by reason of use, your senses, your spiritual senses will be exercised to discern both good and evil because of the banking of the word of God inside of you. When you have the word of God and you are used to not ignoring the word, you are used to obeying the word. What the word tells you to do, you do that. You don't amend the instructions. Over time, you get the spiritual muscle to discern both good and evil. So you know what is good and what is evil. You don't need to call prayer for 100 days before you know what to do because the word is already banked in you. So you can't, you can't short circuit it. You have to do the Bible study. And then, there's something different called the gift of the discerning of spirits, which you'll find in First Corinthians um, um, 12. First Corinthians 12. The gift of the discerning of spirits is when the Holy Spirit opens your eyes and you can see this person is operating in a Jezebel spirit. This person is operating in a witchcraft spirit. This person has a marine spirit. This person has a spirit of infirmity. So God opens your eyes to see in the spirit realm, what spirit is at work in a particular situation? And again, that's a gift of the Holy Spirit. Um, is is not you being suspicious and you know being paranoid and walking around with paranoia. No, it's Holy Spirit opening your eyes. So when when is a gift? You receive the gift from Holy Spirit, and that gift. Is not for gossiping about people or for criticizing people. Some of the things people call discerning is a lie. It's just their own heart. And sometimes their heart is telling them their own evil imagination. So, but discernment comes from the word of God. And the gift of discerning of spirits is a gift of the spirit. Amen. So I'll leave it at that and you will pray accordingly in Jesus name.